would only take a few minutes of me staring that the students would start to quiet down. And then we all follow, of course. Hello and welcome to the 2018 Marty Glickman Awards. I'm Olivia Stomsky. I am the director of the Newhouse uh, Sports Media Center. I almost forgot for a second. We're happy that you all decided to join us this evening to celebrate this year's recipient, Ian Eagle. We have his family here. We have his crew from CBS Sports, Yes Network, as well as Westwood One, and of course all of you, his extended family of Orange Nation and those of us that are so proud to be a part of Syracuse University and of Newhouse. Beginning tonight's uh, festivities, I would like to introduce 1988 Newhouse alum, NBC Sports host and play-by-play, -play, and of course, Ian's longtime friend, Mike Tirico. <laughs> Thanks, Olivia, and a big hand to Olivia for all that she's done with our Newhouse Sports Media Center. It really is uh, an unbelievable idea started by John Nicholson, who's also here tonight with his wife. Thank you, John. And uh, any event that happens here at Newhouse is always uh, one that uh, has for, for well over the last decade included our great Dean, Lorraine Branham. And as many of you know, Dean Branham is uh, dealing with a health issue, but doing, uh, doing well and doing better. And I know I want to extend on her behalf as a member of the Newhouse Advisory Board as well, um, a, tremendous, a tremendous best wishes to Ian and his family and Noah and everyone else obviously who know Lorraine so well. But also we will send back to her our absolute thoughts good feelings that we have uh, Lorraine back here and Dean Branham is back in her normal role as uh, the person touching base with our entire Newhouse family all around the country at almost every event from coast to coast. And Amy Faulkner who's here who's done an unbelievable job stepping in and keeping this place running. I know Amy will send that thought back to Dean Branham on behalf of all of us. So thank you so much. So the, the award uh, is such an interesting and important one to so many of us because it honors Marty Glickman. And for those of you who are here who don't know who Marty Glickman was, uh, there's a great HBO documentary that please, students, you have to watch if you were going to be part of this Newhouse Sports Mafia going forward um, to appreciate the person who was almost a direct descendant for all of us into our desires to get into this business because we've had great diversity in this award. When Beth Mullins won this award, it was the furthest west anyone who's won this award was born <laughs> because there are four New York area kids, Marv Albert, Bob Costas, me, Ian, Sean McDonough, and, and thank goodness Beth was on the west side of town here in central New York to represent the west coast. But the East Coast was the pipeline for so many years for a lot of us, and all of us were touched and inspired by Marv Albert and Bob Costas, first two winners of this award, and their inspiration to get into the business was Marty Glickman, who was a, a hero in many ways, a pioneer as a sportscaster, also a pioneer as an individual as well. If you go back to the 1936 Olympics, I will not go to detail on the story, but uh, the 1936 Olympics and Hitler and Jesse Owens, all of that became of even greater significance because Marty Glickman should have been the person running that 400 meter relay uh, at that time. So we talk about protest and the Olympics and people being banned for who they are and what they represent. Uh, that's Marty Glickman's story in many ways. And he went on to be a great sportscaster for decades in New York. And I think it's really cool tonight that Marty, who some of us grew up listening to as the voice of the Jets, um, that award tonight will be handed to someone who uh, other kids heard as a guy calling Jets games over the years in Iron Eagle. So Marty's memory is with us tonight, his spirit, and also the importance of what this award is truly all about. And I mentioned all the people in that lineage of our history as a sports broadcasting group, Syracuse University sports alums, and our future stars, a lot of the WAR team is here uh, today to heckle Noah when he talks, I'm sure. <laughs> but one of those uh, faces who has, over our time when we were students, come back to uh, touch base with our past history 
and the desire to see Syracuse University students grow as sports commentators uh, was Hank Greenwald, who was a 1957 graduate who uh, not only came to popularity and fame as a voice of the San Francisco Giants, calling national baseball on radio as well, but even going back to his early days was an announcer here in Syracuse with the Syracuse Nats and calling baseball here in Syracuse as well. As uh, many of you probably know, Hank passed away last week. He was one of the truly special people in our business, and um, we just wanted to take a moment to uh, silently remember Hank and at the same time listen to uh, some of his uh, very talented commentary. The great Hank Greenwald, just a moment of remembrance for him. In the slot to the right, to give to Davis. Ernie at the 10, Ernie at the 5. Ernie in for a touchdown! Ernie Davis just refused to be stopped as two men had him at the three-yard line and he just kept struggling forward and went in. Thanks, Mike. There are several friends and supporters that could not make it this evening, but one sent along a very special, special, special message for Ian. This is Marv Albert. It is so appropriate that Ian Eagle has been named winner of this year's Marty Award. Now, Marty Glickman was a great broadcaster and was incredibly so adept at handling a number of different sports and at such a high level. And Ian, along the lines of Marty, is one of the most talented all-around sports broadcasters in the country. Be it NFL, TV, and radio, NBA, tennis, golf, radio talk shows, video games, Ian, with your schedule, it's truly amazing that you are available to be here tonight. All this superb work, despite occasionally having to team up with one of my broadcast partners, the czar, Mike Fratello, who single-handedly, I must say, has destroyed careers of many people he's worked with. It is always a treat to listen to Ian, his play-by-play -play call is right on, he does it with a, a subtle sense of humor, and always has wonderful rapport with his analyst sidekicks, or most of them. Ian, congratulations on such a well-deserved honor. In a discussion of the most humorous in our industry, Ian Eagle is usually on the top. But next to him is another name that we are all so familiar with at Newhouse. Up next is a 2005 Newhouse alum and ESPN Chicago White Sox announcer, Jason Benetti. Jason. Well, um, with that intro, I now feel like you all expect me to tell some jokes <laughs> or to do an impersonation of somebody in the front row and I, d <laughs> I don't think I can do that tonight. Normally I, uh, I, I would not prepare remarks for something like this but uh, it's, it's funny that that's how you introduced me because I, I've prepared these because uh, the person we're honoring tonight is, is terribly important to me. Uh, when, when we are just dipping our toe into this industry, we need somebody to follow, somebody who treats every event and every person as important, someone who keep, uh, keeps caring so deeply about the games, no matter the schedule, someone beloved by local fans and also is widely known nationally, somebody who you just know is calling the game from the moment you hear his voice, uh, somebody, pardon, uh, somebody who without fail encourages you to, to be you, because he is. Uh, we all know the man we're here for tonight lives all of those things. Uh, some folks know him as just a guy with a, a three-letter name or dad. Others know him by his bird nickname. I'm speaking, of course, about Ken Hawk Harrelson. <laughs> Ken was born uh, just south of Spartanburg, South Carolina. And when I took over for him as the White Sox announcer, he just could Ken, are you here? <laughs> he is here. So glad of, uh, to have you here. Um, 
So it was, I believe it was 2005, and I was filling in for the Syracuse Chiefs, and I had been sitting on the bus waiting for it to leave to go to Rochester or some other very tropical uh, International League port of call. And I actually had just recently realized I locked my keys in my car in the player's parking lot. So I had something to deal with when I got back. And my phone rang, and it was uh, Ian Eagle, who we actually are here to honor tonight. And uh, Ian, I had sent a CD. Remember those kids? That's fun. <laughs> I had sent a CD of my work to, to Ian, and we talked for a little while. And one of the things he said to me was, hey, uh, people are going to know that you're smart. You don't have to try to tell them that you are. You can kind of tone it down a little bit, which for all of his references, I honestly, it's terrible advice. <laughs> but I, I still live by it today. Uh, at every turn when I have needed somebody to lean on in this industry, somebody to talk about should I take this job or that job, uh, should I go on national television and do play-by-play -play for Nintendo games? No, that was him. Uh, Ian has always been there. He is funny, he is smart, but he also calls a damn good game. It was, I think it was four years ago, Oregon, Wisconsin in the NCAA tournament. Uh, it was my last year with the Chiefs, so I was actually standing and clapping uh, in my apartment anyway. But, <laughs> but I remember watching, sorry, nobody let the Chiefs know I said that. I love it here. Delighted to have you with us. So I just have to go to the well. Uh, but I remember watching that game, and I was actually watching with Kevin Brown, uh, who's an alum who's doing very well for himself. And we both just kind of looked at each other and said, this is a freaking master class of how to call a big game. I, it, it so stuck in my mind that that's what you want as a play-by-play -play announcer, for you to elevate an already great game, for you to be the steward for wonderful TV and radio. And uh, Ian is always there for a good laugh, too. I, I had done a football game at one point, and uh, my spotter, we have people, if you don't know, uh, in football, we have legitimately people who point to who's doing what for us, because we're totally incapable of most everything. <laughs> as play-by-play -play announcers, evidently. Uh, and my spotter came up to me at halftime of that game. It was a local person, and he said, hey, uh, I don't think my eyes are very good. <laughs> Thought, what? <laughs> what? So I, I actually had a moment where I thought, uh, you know, can I, can I do this? Is there, am I doing something wrong? Like, what if I don't have a spotter who's good? And I called Ian, and he said, uh, what binoculars are you using? And I said, oh, these little Bushnell ones. He basically said, come on, you dope. Like, there are better ones. And I, it, it, he didn't call me a dope. I, I called myself one. You may, you may have. I don't know. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> I tried to soften it, but he's actually a jerk. <laughs> uh, that is analogous for what Ian has meant to me and so many other people in this industry, is that when there is a moment of fear or wonder or whatever it might be, he is able to stabilize that with words and with care and with understanding. And not only that, but he provides us all something to aim for. For, for some play-by-play -play announcers, it is do your work, go to the game, do a game, check out. Every game Ian does has something special that is uniquely him. And he takes something that could be so transactional and he turns it into this beautiful, empty, blank piece of paper that can become art or architecture or a great book. And for that, all of us thank him. Uh, the, the best way I think I can put it is Ian sees the game through his own prism so easily and so deftly. And not only that, but is the, the shining light that surges through all of ours, all of our prisms, who he's touched. And for that, on behalf of everybody in this room and everybody who he's been a part of their life, thank you, sir.
Thank you, Jason. You never disappoint. All right, our next speaker may make you do a double take. This sports director at WAR, play by play and host for ACC Network and Citrus TV. This senior here at Newhouse has been heard calling himself the Eagle 2.0. Please welcome Ian's son, Noah Eagle. I prefer the eaglet, actually. The eagle. I don't know who's saying equal 2.0. Um, first of all, just want to say this is an incredible honor, an incredible night overall for myself, for my family, for my father. Just having him here on campus, it, it really is a special moment. So thank you to everyone who made this possible, Professor Stomsky, for all your work putting it together, and everyone here who had to take time out of their busy schedules to be here. Thank you, seriously. It, it means a lot to all of us. Uh, Jason Bonetti was actually the first person to show me around Newhouse. So full circle there, yeah. This is a, I also, <laughs> I also, I didn't realize that Jason Bonetti went to high school with uh, Juice World. That's really for the young people back there. You and Juice close? <laughs> you and Juice are close? Yes, that's right, that's right. <laughs> um, growing up, you know, around a sportscaster, it was easy to fall in love with sports and fall in love with the craft as well. Uh, I, would, I would grow up, and when I was super, super young, you want to be around your dad. And my dad was in his office meticulously taking notes constantly, doing his prep, doing his boards. And I would sit in his office with him, and at the time, there were media guides still, thick media guides, not everything was online. And I would sit there and I would sift through media guides, just continuously going through them until I memorized pretty much everything for any team, for any player. And, and I really became a, a legitimate fan of many players in my life to the point where I would wake up in the morning and I wouldn't tell my parents which player I wanted to be called that day. So they would say no, I would not respond until they said, Dirk or Shaquille <laughs> and my favorite player was Keyshawn Johnson so we would be at the at the supermarket and my mom would be like Noah no response Noah no response Keyshawn <laughs> yeah and then the people outside are like you named your son Keyshawn <laughs> but look growing up obviously a huge sports fan and being around it I loved it I loved it all and I wanted to be like my dad. I, I truly did, I always did. Always looked up to him. I, until about like 16 years old. Then it feel, I felt like the roles reversed in some sense. I got the nice, bold framed glasses, and like two days later, eh, maybe it was a little longer, a few weeks later, my dad comes walking in like, you like my new glasses? I'm like, those are the same ones that I have. The same ones. I went and got a watch at Nordstrom Rack. You remember the watch, you might be wearing the watch. Okay. <laughs> I got a watch, it was like $25, I was psyched. I'm like, oh wow, it's, a, it's an Adidas watch, it looks like a designer watch. I was wearing it, walked downstairs, and he goes, you like my new watch? I'm like, okay. Uh, but it, it's not like that for everything because, you know, we have the same, the same similar style, similar look. I'm definitely not adopted, at least so I know. Um, but I will say this, and Mike, you can attest to this. Technologically, he is not the best. Not the best technologically. Still does his charts by hand, which many people do, but it, the best way to do it online. I mean, it just saves time, saves energy, all of that. So that's one example, but another one is he's, he's reluctant to change a little bit. And yes, just a tad. So when the app Uber came out, my dad loved taking cabs. I don't know why. Just, I don't, was it the conversation? Like, okay, yeah. Uh, so my sister, my mom, and I, we were all, all in on Uber. We're like, this is great. Put it right in your phone, quick response. You can get it, cheap. He's like, no, nah, I'm good, I'll take a cab. We're like, come on, you gotta do it. You've, you've got to switch to Uber. Finally, he's like, okay, I'll do it. So I tell him, download the app, fill out what you need to fill out, you're good. I'm sitting again in his office, just as I was as a young kid reading through media guides, and he's like, 
All right, I, I downloaded Uber. I'm answering through all the questions. They're asking me for like a background. I, this is a lot. I didn't realize there was so many questions. I'm like, it's a little strange, but I just, just finished, fill them all out. Just fill them all out. Finally, he finishes filling out all of his questions and it says, congratulations, you're the newest Uber driver. <laughs> So we got it fixed, but hey, if anyone needs a uh, ride to the airport, like a 4.9 rating, really tremendous. He's known, it says known for the conversation. <laughs> uh, one thing that's been mentioned uh, so far through the first few speakers is the quick wits. That's something that my father is known for. Uh, a great example is really right when he was starting his career, it was the Hoop It Up tournament. Hoop it up, a little street ball action. Uh, families would come play together, and there was, was it the Williams family? Wilson. Wilson? W, it, it, same. Uh, Wilson family. And after it, it was the father and his two sons in a three on three. And so he interviews the one. He's, the whole day, he's been doing sidelines. He's been doing a great job interviewing all of the contestants. It's like, how, you know to the father, how'd you think it went? How was Hoop It Up? It was great, you know, we had a great time as a family. We really enjoyed playing in the, in the tournament. Everything goes to the next kid. What'd you think? Well, I love playing with my dad. This was a great opportunity. Third kid, oh, loved it. This was, this was great. Out of the corner of his eye, he sees the mother holding, what, was, what would you say, two? Two years old? Yes, Two-year-old son. Two-year-old son, he goes, I'm gonna end, this was the last interview of the day. I'm gonna end the day with a bang goes over to the two-year-old son. What about you, little Johnny? What do you think of Hoop It Up? And this might be an obscene gesture, so I apologize, but Johnny, instead of answering, just goes, looks directly at my dad and then to the camera and just goes. <laughs> <laughs> and for most, for most young broadcasters right out of school, it's over. It, it's a breakdown after that. But for my dad, he looked at jo little Johnny, looked back in the camera, and with a light smile said, well, the Wilson family clearly thinks Hoop It Up is number one. <laughs> it, it's what separates. It separates. Last year, we got to call a game together, which I thought was going to be the culmination of my time at Syracuse. Uh, that was something that I had dreamed of, and people had always come up to me and said, Hey, what if, what if you get to call a game with your dad one day? Wouldn't that be awesome? I'm like, yeah, that would be really, really cool. And we got there, and it was just business as usual. Everything went super well. I'm sure many of you have seen the interview of, of the two of us. The, the cool thing about that game and about that interview is that is just how we are. That's our conversation. We got there. We sat down. CBS crew can attest. It was, hey, give us three, five minutes and go for it. And it was just us talking. And that was, to me, the coolest thing about my broadcasting career so far is just being myself. And that's something that he has instilled in me from day one. So that was incredibly cool. It was a really special moment just like this. We go back to, to why we give this award to people, why Newhouse gives this award to people. And for my father, here's what I came up with. And here's what he's taught me through the years and how he has applied it to his career, how I'll apply it to my career, and why he was given this award. The first one is what I just said, be yourself on air. This is something I've learned from him telling me and also just through osmosis of watching him through the years. Everything you see on TV or hear on the radio is 100%, not artificially, genuinely him. And that is absolutely important, whether it's him saying, oh, oh, Reggie, or, calling Mike Fratello's drawings a chicken McNugget. You don't know what's, what's gonna come and that's what's great about it. The second thing is to put in that work. I mentioned all those, all those years, all those hours that I sat and watched him hand write his charts. He was putting in the work hours at a time, hours per week. <laughs> I, th I thought that making you guess my name was good enough, but all right. Uh, <laughs> Putting in the work and controlling what you can control. Your thoughts, putting a positive energy out there and being someone that people want to be around. That is all extremely important. His passion, his work ethic, it's always there and it won't ever fade until he decides he's ready to retire and just, I don't know, where do you want to go after retirement? Good. 
good. Good. Applebee's, I don't know. Um, third one is, and this is something that he reminds me on a, a somewhat consistent basis, is people at home don't care what's going on in your life. And this is something he does a great job of. He travels a great deal. A great deal, as do many people in this room. Everyone's traveling, and when you travel as much as you do, things go wrong. It happens. They don't put, Joe in Ohio doesn't care if the guy you were sitting next to on the plane went barefoot and had terrible smelling feet. Does not care. They don't care about the band of frat brothers that were partying in your room until 3 a.m. next to you. They don't care if you missed the last episode of The Bachelor and you're still pissed off. I, that, might, that one's me. But they don't care. They don't care. So you leave everything at the door and you go and do your job. And the final one, and this one is the most important, is be a good person. And you embody that 100%. I, for the first few years I was at Syracuse, people would say, hey, you know, I'm blah, 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 what's your name? And I would say, I'm Noah. I didn't want to, I didn't want to include Eagle because I didn't want to be synonymous with that. I wanted to make my own name, make my own legacy. And then I got to the point where enough people came up to me and said, hey, you're on Eagle Sun, right? Unbelievable guy. I never got, oh, that's so cool. I always have gotten, I don't think I've ever in my life met someone that said, hey, you're Iron Eagle's son, shitty guy. <laughs> that's not how it works. I've, everyone, who, everyone who I've met is, says, hey, you're Iron Eagle's son, unbelievable guy. He's the best. And that's why now it's such a sense of pride for me to say I'm Noah Eagle and I'm following in my father's footsteps. I know that Aaron, my mom, my grandparents, our whole family, it, it means so much to us, everything that you do and everything you've provided. And we're very thankful. You deserve it. Enjoy the night. Thank you, Noah. Nobody wants to come up after that, so we should just wrap it now. It was a great night. We're good. I would like to take this moment to recognize um, past Marty Glickman Award winners that we have with us tonight. First, Beth Mowens, thank you for coming. <laughs> Sean McDonough, thank you for coming. We'll get to you, not yet. I'd also like to recognize, and he has been um, acknowledged already tonight, but not by me, so it's important. My predecessor and my mentor, John Nicholson, thank you so much for being here. All right. So it has become a tradition well before my time, but I'm glad that it has, that the previous recipient of the Marty Glickman Award present the award to the current honoree. In 2017, the Newhouse Sports Media Center honored Mike Trico for his accomplishment and career in leadership sports media with the Marty Glickman Award. It is now my honor to introduce award-winning Syracuse alum and, of course, our friend, Mike Trico. Let's go, let's go. Come on, thanks again. Oh, my gosh. Enough about Ian. Can we go home? God. <laughs> <laughs> well, while, while we're, uh, and by the way, at the end of the night, if you haven't been shouted out, we apologize. Just stand up and call your name for a round of applause. Rick Wright, Lynn Vanderhoek, who has been essential to so much we've done at Newhouse over the years. Howie Denneroff from CBS Radio. Ian's family from CBS Sports is here, including a few surprises that you didn't know were going to show up, which was so awesome. And uh, it, this is the busy time of the year as most of you know in the sports world, and for the folks from CBS who've made the effort to come and surprise I, and it tells you how special he is in all of their eyes. It's awesome to see a lot of our competitors who push us every day and a lot of you who are friends. Awesome that you guys are here. This is everything you need to know. Evan Washburn among the group here. Since we're only counting out uh, anyways on TV for our egos only. Uh, <laughs> Momentarily. Uh, and, and another person from our university family who's here uh, re representing the amazing leadership that we have at our school right now, our provost Michelle Wheatley is here. Thank you for being here. 
it's good firsthand to see all of us new house nerds who love each other so much like Matt Part and Brian Higgins behind us um, <laughs> as well. So um, I'm going to move this along so we can uh, n have more of Ian and Noah just chatting with each other, which is pretty, pretty damn funny. Uh, before I get deep into this, I spoke to Bob Costas a couple of hours ago, who was hopeful to be here. But the Red Sox beating the Dodgers so quickly uh, kept Bob out on the West Coast. So he personally wanted to make sure he reached out to me this afternoon to wish you uh, his absolute best. And um, he'd like to congratulate another person who keeps Beth as the tallest winner of this award in the history of this award. <clears throat> you, fit, you fit the qualifications perfectly. <laughs> yes. So congratulations. <clears throat> Which, by the way, is the only reason you're getting the award. McDonough did ask me to say that um, we are very sad as a group to announce that this is the final awarding of the Marty Glickman Award because we've gotten to the absolute bottom of the list. <laughs> it's Sean's line, but I'm glad to steal it. I spoke, I, I, got, off the, um, I got off the highway, uh, that whole seven minute ride from the airport, which is why we love Syracuse so much. And um, I was just thinking, I was, seriously, it sounds like one of these strange things, but now over 50, so I do these old guy stuff, old guy things now. And I thought of the number of times that, uh, that Ian impacted my life when I was working here in local TV. And I picked up the phone and I called the guy who helped get us started, a guy by the name of John Eaves. John was in local TV as the sports director at Channel 5, the CBS affiliate in Syracuse, which had news at that time. And uh, John was the sports director. I started doing weekends, and uh, we had a, a few all-star interns, including Beth and Ian Eagle. And Ian saved our butt so often, because Ian was so good. No, you think you're a prodigy? You're nothing, brother. <laughs> Ian was so good early on that after working the whole week in high school football on Friday nights, when we would call Channel 3 or Channel 9, actually, we'd ask our interns if they could disguise their voices and ask, hey, do you have the score of my high school's game? Because they would send all their scores to Channel 9. That's how we got our scores. <laughs> we, 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 we were creative, OK? We were groundbreaking and creative. So then Saturday, you covered Syracuse games, whatever you did. We were you know, up 15 hours and doing a post-game show. And we did the coaches' shows during the week, so we were exhausted. So Sundays, when CBS had a doubleheader, it was the greatest thing possible because we didn't have a 6 o'clock newscast. But in those days, to show you how old we were, we are, you had to record the games by yourself for the highlights. There wasn't a service to feed you the highlights. You couldn't go online and just scrape the highlights. You had to record the entire football games. Like with old, larger than VHS size tapes, three quarter inch tapes of those of you who are old enough to remember that stuff. Anyway, when Ian started interning for us, we didn't have to go in. We could send Ian in in the morning and he would record two, three football games and have everything set up. It got to the point, seriously, when I was working seven days a week at that point that on Sundays, Ian had pretty much our entire show done. And that was when he was a sophomore in college. So, you know how people say we knew? We, we not only knew, we were the beneficiaries of his greatness. So, like I said, no, a lot of people think that you're impressive. It, you're, you are, you are 2.0. Because I, I got to see 1.0 with my own eyes, and he was, he was awesome. There are so many things we love about Ian. Um, his family, Lisa, Noah, Aaron, you're all here. As you said so well, your grandparents being here, it's so cool to have a Syracuse family. Like the four of you are a Q's family through and through, and that is so darn cool. Because the, as a, a dad with two kids, the ultimate example of your dad doing things the right way and your mom being somebody who you look up to is the fact that they don't run away from who you are. They want to be just like mom and dad. And here are both of you here continuing an awesome legacy of two incredible people who nobody ever says a bad word about. The next person to say a bad word about your mom or dad will take out. <laughs> we'll create a caravan and get their ass out of the country. <laughs> as opposed to the reverse. They are, they're the greatest people. And you guys are going to be all that and more. And um, it's really fun to be able to see and, and watch, watch all of that. Ian's career, which has not been... Um, 
alluded to by a lot of folks just in history. So I'll give you just a quick background other than interning for us. Uh, I am working at WFAN, uh, getting the opportunity to produce for uh, Mike Francesa and Chris Russo at times. I am hosting Bagels and Baseball. Did anybody remember that show? Yes, that's, <laughs> that has not made it to the Radio Hall of Fame yet, <clears throat> and <laughs> probably won't. But Ian was starting out early on and got a chance, not just behind the scenes, but on the air in New York Sports Talk Radio, and everybody heard how great he was, and then parlayed that into his opportunity hosting the pre- and post-game show for the Jets, and then doing the Nets games, and then radio to TV, and all of a sudden, here's this kid who's 25, and he looks like he's 19, and now he's on TV with uh, America's greatest happy hour guest, Bill Raftery, doing Nets games, and... He makes everybody who he's been around, or he is with, or who is watching, happy and better. And that's an incredible skill. It's an impossible to teach, only natural DNA type skill. And Ian has that in spades. And all you have to do is put the TV on and you know that. Uh, his work with tennis and video games and everything else shows you that he has depth and quality. And we spend, I don't know, maybe five or six times a year checking in with each other. And we have this similar conversation. Hey, you know, you're going to slow down? You're, you're working a lot. Yeah, 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 I know. And you're working a lot, too. Yeah, 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 yeah. But Ian loves his work. And the people who watch him work love him. And that's the ultimate compliment. There are a bunch of people who can identify a player, identify a moment in a game, uh, elevate a moment that happens. But Ian does it in a likable, distinct, clear, enjoyable way that the game's never about him, but because of him, you enjoy the game. And that's the biggest compliment you can have. As an individual, um, I, I can honestly say that there are a whole bunch of people, including most of the front row here, who are really, really good friends. But I've been able to have more conversations about work, about our kids, about life with Ian, and it's been really neat to go from being a couple of years older and somebody who Ian was asking advice to, to turning that around and leaning on him for advice. He's wise, wise beyond his years. He's smart, intelligent, a great person. And you're gonna see in this video that is uh, produced by the awesome folks who are part of Ian's CBS family and Yes Network family, that his career has been an absolute treat for those of us who've watched and those of us who've been a part of. So enjoy this video looking at uh, Ian, it's Ian. <laughs> Ian's career. If you look at some of the people I've worked with over my career, they're all first name guys. There's Al, there's Keith, there's Dick, there's Vern, and now there's Ian, I mean Ian. His name is Ian? Ian Eagle. Why do you spell it like Ian then? I'm Noah Eagle joined by a very special guest in uh, Ian, Jan. I heard him on WFAN. And I said, who is this Iron Eagle? And why am I in love with his voice? A new era begins today in Indy. Peyton Manning takes the next step to the professional level. Iron Eagle along with Mark May, great to be with you for the return of the NFL on CBS. Iron Eagle along with Bill Raftery. Iron Eagle along with Hall of Famer Dan Fouts. Iron Eagle along with Jim Spinarkle. What have you had, a million partners? Iron Eagle, Larry Ross and Carol Lewis. Along with Rich Gannon. Along with Martina Navratilova. Along with Boomer Esiason. I mean, I've been with him for nine years, and I think that's a record for him. Coach Steve Lavin. Chris Weber. Clark Kellogg. Solomon Wilcox. Kelly Tripuca. Sarah Kustak. Brent Barry. Well, if he was so good, he wouldn't have so many partners. Ian Eagle. I think he's the most underrated broadcaster in our business. He's so good at everything he does. He elevates everyone that he works with, and I think that's what makes him so special. He says what you wish you had said, but even better than you could imagine, and sooner. Right, the drive! Oh! You always nail the big moment. Manny lets it fly. It's caught by Thomas. There's the record. 51 touchdowns. Bosch has got it. Clears. Allen fires. Oh, oh, Ray Allen. Two seconds. One second. Chiosa tosses it up. Oh, oh, a miracle. We've had so many amazing calls over the years. Touchdown. Who are these guys? Send it in, big fella. 
That's mine, but that's okay. Pierce for the lead. Oh, he's got it. The truth delivers. Tyreek Hill, game-breaking speed. Oh, no. No, he didn't. Half-court heave. A prayer at the buzzer. Oh! I would never have any hesitation assigning Ian to do any sport in this world. Florida State Brandon Byram burning up the track. Tennis Channel, the 2018 French Open live from Paris. NBA playoffs. James, two seconds, one second for the win. Oh, LeBron James delivers. Nets. Dinwiddie fades. Oh, Spencer Dinwiddie. Thursday Night Football Radio. Tom Brady joins the 500 touchdown club. You don't have to do every every game that's out there. Oh, what a grab! Antonio Brown! The NCAA tournament. The madness is real! The Orange Crush, the Spartans tournament host. I, I have a ping pong match against my three-year-old coming up. You want to come to the backyard and do play-by-play -play for that, too? I'm not going to do an iron impression. You know, any good impression is there's a base. When he's getting ready for a game, this is him looking in the mirror. One word to describe Ian Eagle, hysterical. Nobody is funnier than Ian out there. This has been the all-hair region. Guy, Mosquera, Ferreira, Gak, that lady, Lloyd Christmas. Sasha Vujacic! Sasha Vujacic! Are you in preschool yet? No, I'm in trouble. Where is Bill Raftery? He has joined the other eagle. I just left you. <laughs> yeah. Or somebody that looks like you. You left a, a better looking 21 year old version of me that actually works out. It's always the right line at the exact right moment. LeBron streaks in and misses the jam. LeBron James is human. Trip throws it up. Oh, a, neck, a wedgie. And what you did on that Colbert show. We have some breaking news. Steven has picked a non-carousel microwave. He has to stop and rotate the hot pocket by hand. That's a huge mental error from Colbert. He remembers every line from every Seinfeld. Johnson, the step back. He oh! buries it. <laughs> that was real, and that was spectacular. Iron Eagle's getting a Marty? How old is he? I guess he had nobody else to give it to. I was asked to say something nice about Iron Eagle. I would if I could. Congratulations on the 2018 Marty Glickman Award, Noah Eagle. Noah, this is a tremendous honor. It's really been a meteoric rise for you, and oh, it's the wrong Eagle. Noah's dad won the award. It's hard to be serious with the bird. It really is. Uh, but congratulations. Ian, congrats. It's well deserved. You're a true professional. It's been a real pleasure working with you over the years. Ian, congratulations on this extremely prestigious award. We're all so thrilled for you. When I was a student at WAER, you were amazing to me and all of my classmates. We are so fortunate to have someone like you in the Syracuse community. He's everything that this school seems to embody. He is a consummate pro and my dear friend. You have earned the respect of every single person in this industry. You've been a model for all of us. And growing up, watching you do it is really the reason that I got into this. I think that if it had not been for you, I may have been a marine biologist. I don't know. Congrats, Dad. There is no one that deserves this award more than you. I'm so proud to be going to a place that you left your legacy at, even though it's a hard one to follow. There are certain sports announcers that when they're doing a game, it becomes a huge event. Whether it's Dick Enberg or McKay or Summerall or Gowdy or Scully or Jackson, there is no doubt in my mind that when Ian Eagle's career is over, he's going to be included in that group of men. That was so well produced. That whoever at CBS put that together did an incredible, incredible. Brian. Awesome, man. That's great. Where the hell were you last year when I won? Um, I'm going to read this. The Marty Glickman Award for Leadership in Sports Media, Ian Eagle, 2018, presented by Newhouse Sports Media Center, and in a great honor of my career, handed over to our friend, Ian Eagle.
This is overwhelming. Was Bill Raftery at a deposition? Where was he? Was he being arrested? What happened there? Coming back to campus, you just feel this injection of excitement coming back here and seeing all the young people and then you walk in this room and you look out and you realize you're really old. <laughs> like really old. Basically, in 1982, I had a very small and intimate bar mitzvah. This is what I envisioned, more of this. My parents did not deliver on that. This night is very special on, on so many levels. First and foremost, that Mike Tirico is the person that is presenting this award. I met Mike in the fall of 1987 at a Homer High School football game. Go Trojans! <laughs> Homer, New York. I was assigned by uh, WJPZ Z89 to go cover the game, and it was me and my very close friend David Fleischer. Uh, David was not only one of my best friends, but one of the best people that I've ever known. And David's son, Charlie, goes to school here. And his nephew, Lucas, goes to school here. David, unfortunately, lost his life two years ago to scleroderma. And there's not a day that doesn't go by that I don't think about him. And I bring it up because he and I went to the game, and Mike Tirico's on the sidelines, had just started doing local TV. And I'm with David. David's gregarious. David... He, uh, he had no shy bone in his body. And he points over, he says, is that Mike Tirico? I said, yeah, I, I think it is. He says, well, let's go say hi. I said, no, no, I, we don't need to do that. We're not gonna bother Mike. He goes, what? He'll be thrilled to meet us. <laughs> you think anybody's recognizing that guy? Not, okay, let's go meet him. So we walk over and guess what? He was thrilled to meet us could not have been any nicer, more gregarious. We walk over, David says, David, uh, David Fleischer, Mike Tirico, Ian Eagle. Mike says, great, where are you guys from? He says, I'm from Chicago. I said, I'm from uh, Queens. He goes, I'm from Queens. Where? I said, I'm from Forest Hills. I'm from Bayside. He said, did you play center for your high school team? I did, I did not, did you? No, we've had a lot in common. That moment changed my whole life. One moment, going to a high school football game, introducing myself to Mike Tirico. He says, hey, would you guys like to maybe stop by the station? We're looking for interns. Great, let's do it. Within a week, I was interning at WTVH, the CBS affiliate. Within two weeks, I was helping produce his Sunday show. And then over a lifetime, he's become one of the closest friends that I could ever hope for. And here's the moral of the story. Two things. One, if you're at a high school football game, introduce yourself to people. Two, try to identify the future host of the Olympics that's standing on the sidelines <laughs> and get to know him. A little bit. <laughs> the reality is Mike is, simply put, the most talented sportscaster in the world. All right. There's one guy in the Philippines that's also very good. <laughs> it's like neck and neck between him and Mike. And I look back on my time at Syracuse, and I look back at my time in this business, and... So much of it is owed to Mike and to his guidance and to his friendship and to his deft touch and how he leads his life. So Mike, thank you so much and thank you for your kind words. You're the best. All right.
I, I want to get something out of the way because this has been bothering me for a long time. Everybody always asks me, is that your real name, Ian Eagle? And I always answer, yes, of course, it's my real name. My parents were entertainers. I was born in the 60s. You can draw your own conclusions. A lot of wacky stuff was happening back then. Here's the thing. I've never said this. This is going to be very tough for me. My family doesn't even know this. It's not my real name. <laughs> I know. I know it's hard to believe. I've been living a lie. My given name, I can't believe I'm doing this. My given name is Robert Costos. <laughs> I know. So, for the first 12 years of my life, it was great. There's little Bobby Costos <laughs> playing stickball, announcing the pickup games. Oh, there's Bobby Costos. He wants to be a sportscaster. And then this guy, Bob Costas, became popular. All right, none of that's true. It's Ian Eagle. Who the hell would change their name to Ian Eagle? That's my real name. I hope we can end this here and never discuss this topic again. Marty Glickman was a giant in the industry. Syracuse is the cradle of sportscasters because of Marty Glickman. None of this is happening without Marty, without setting off this chain reaction that he did. Marty Glickman, in addition to his illustrious career as a broadcaster, was also a broadcast coach later in his career for NBC and for Sports Channel in New York. And when I got the net job in 1995, the broadcast coach for Sports Channel was Marty Glickman. Incredible. I get a phone call after I get the job. Ian? Yes. Marty Glickman. <laughs> I said, Marty, what, what an honor to speak with you. Yes. Yes, it is an honor. <laughs> I'd like to meet with you, Ian. I said, let's do it. How was November 28th for you, Ian? I said, November 28th is great. I'll meet you in the city. Great. I go into the city. I meet with Marty Glickman. We go have a Italian lunch at a restaurant two blocks away from his apartment on the Upper East Side. And it was glorious. He's regaling me with stories. But I find that he's asking a lot about me. This is before Noah was born, before we had kids. I was recently married. I had just gotten the net job. And we sit and talk for 90 minutes, 90 minutes that I'll never forget. And then we go to his apartment. He says, we're going to critique your tape. Are you ready? I said, yeah, I'm ready. I was not ready. <laughs> Marty takes out a yellow legal pad, and it's full. Every page is full. Notes. Detailed. He hands me the remote control from the VCR. He says, when I tell you to hit pause, you pause. When I tell you to hit play, he's getting serious. When I tell you to hit play, you play. So, boom, we start the tape. I realize, 10 seconds into the tape, it's the first game I've done. It's the Nets and the Toronto Raptors to open up the 1995 season. Now, we've done about 20 games at this point, but he has critiqued that game. And I paused the tape. I said, oh, Marty, is this the game we're going to watch? He said, do you have a problem with it? <laughs> I, I said, no, no. I said, you realize that's the first game? He said, that's right. So we start, hit play. Hi, everybody. I and Eagle along with Bill Rafter. Stop the tape. <laughs> I stopped the tape. What? He goes, where are you looking? I said, Marty, I, I don't know. He goes, what were you doing? trying not to throw up. I <laughs> just trying to get through it. So he takes the next hour. He picks me apart. Picks me apart. 
by the end of it, I really am considering a career as a podiatrist. I wanna, <laughs> I wanna get out of the business. But he was right. Everything he said was right. His main focus, his main goal was to consider the listener on radio, consider the viewer on television. That's it. You are not important. You are not the story. The game is. The most important part, and this is true for all parts of our business, who are you doing this for? Who are you trying to resonate with? And that, that small tip has stayed with me for all of these years. I come back to Syracuse and I can't tell you how much SU means to me, Newhouse means to me. I met my wife Elisa here at Flint Hall, January of 1987. Yeah, Flint. Yeah. 3C, baby. So I met my wife here, 1987. I met my daughter Erin here today for the first time. <laughs> I travel a lot. <laughs> what a lovely young lady, too. I'm so proud of this school, and I'm proud every time anyone asks me, where'd you go to college? Because you get it a lot for the rest of your life. Where'd you go to college? Syracuse. Oh. The reaction, yeah, that's right, yeah. <laughs> Anything need to be said? That's it. Syracuse, you got it. What started here, and started even before here, relationships has been a common thread throughout my life. And that word has meant so much throughout my career, throughout my life. And the relationships that you form here for the students will be forever, forever. These will be people that you know for the rest of your life, people that you're connected with in some way. And not on a superficial level, people that you truly know. So Mike Tirico, last year's winner. Sean McDonough, previous winner. Quintessential play-by-play -play man. Everybody that went to school from the late 80s to early 90s and beyond wanted to do a game like Sean. Every game, a masterpiece. Passion, preparation, delivering in the moment. Michigan, Michigan State, Yukon, Syracuse, the Phillies and the Blue Jays. These are indelible broadcast moments that Sean has this innate ability to transform the viewer. Anyone that does play-by-play, -play, watch one game that Sean does, take notes, and then integrate it into your style. Copy him, basically. Definitely do that. Do that. <laughs> Benetti's lived his whole career off that. <laughs> Jason Benetti, here's the thing, I love Jason but I also have strong feelings the other way because he makes this look so easy and effortless because he has incredible command of the English language and this compass throughout a game that carries him through every situation. It's mind-boggling how talented you are and I'm beyond proud of, of you as a person, as a broadcaster, the whole package. Beth Mowens, how are we all connected? 1989, I'm a senior, I'm working at WAER, who walks in? Beth Mowens, graduate student, played basketball at Lafayette. It's not easy stepping in as a grad student, especially at AER. It was not an easy situation to walk into. She handled it incredibly well. Anyone who knew her then knew that she would be the person she is today, the broadcaster. People say, oh, how hard could it be doing play-by-play, -play, putting the headset on, and making these sporting events come to life? Beth is a trailblazer. She's changed the industry. Everyone that knew her then 
knew that she would be that person. Everyone. You were a star the second you walked into the station. And it was just a case of everybody else getting the memo. Now they've got it. When I grew up, I thought I knew what a rock star was. You know, Mick Jagger from the Rolling Stones, Jim Morrison of the Doors, David Lee Roth from Van Halen. The reality is, I now know what a rock star is because it's my wife. Elisa is the rock star of the family. She handles everything, and she does it without any complaints and without any regrets. Elisa knew nothing about this business, nothing. And now she'll call me and say, I think the A1 is riding the para parabolic mic a little hot. <laughs> may want to talk to him about that. I saw a quick move on Elvis that you may want to tell the TD, a little quick. My uh, in-laws are here, Gene and Sue Terry. I met Gene here at Syracuse at Joey's Restaurant Carrier Circle. He paid. <laughs> they have been incredibly supportive to me. I mean, look, let's face it. They probably wanted a doctor or a lawyer for their daughter. They settled for a broadcaster. It worked out. It's all good. They're the best, and it's so nice of them to, to come up from Florida. Enjoying the weather? It's going well? Yeah, it's about four more months of gray. You'll be good. Stay a while. You've got a timeshare. The other part of relationships is something I experience on a daily basis because I have many, many different relationships based on who I'm working with and when I'm working with them. So that's broadcast partners. Dan Fouts lives in like Iceland. He does not live anywhere close. Dan really wanted to be here. I knew he would not make it. He did not know that he wouldn't make it. Here's the reality. Uh, Dan, Dan and I hit it off five minutes into our broadcast relationship. Literally, I knew five minutes in that this was going to be a home run. It's a partnership in every definition of the word. True partnership, friendship, and what you hear on the air is what it is off the air. It's really easy, and that's what we all hope for. My broadcast crew from CBS here, Brian Jago, to put together that amazing video. Truly, really, that, that's really, really special. How many, it took you a month, six weeks, how long? Year, year and a half. Year and a half in the making before they even announced the award. <laughs> Ryan Pavlicek, Steve Karasik, Bob Fishman, Jen Sabatel, David Burson, Mark Wolf, Evan Washburn, Ross Malloy, this is family to me, and this is what our lives are like. Every week, you go on the road, you spend three days with your family, and then you go back and you introduce yourself to your real family again and again and again. Some advice, and this is where we'll wrap things up. Rick Wright, amazing. That was truly, I knew I made it when Rick Wright said, major market, major market, Iron Eagle, major market. <laughs> Marv Albert, previous winner, I idolized Marv growing up, idolized him. When I got the job at FAN following graduation, I was a studio producer, so I worked on Rangers broadcast, Knicks broadcast, Mets broadcast. When Marv Albert, at the end of a Rangers radio broadcast, said in the credits, Studio Operations by Ian Eagle. That was it. I, I thought I could retire at that point. I thought that was it. I had a personal highlight this summer. I went to a barbecue thrown by Marv's son, Kenny Albert. Marv Albert was there. His brother Al Albert was there, and Steve Albert was there. Three of them in a row 
at one point it's just me, Marv, Steve, and Al. I tell them a joke and I get to the punchline and if the 11-year-old version of me would have known that the 49-year-old version of me would have experienced this in any way, it was incredible, a pinch me moment. I tell the joke, it ends, and this is what I get. In sync, three reactions. Oh, yes, 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 bang, bang, bang. It's over. Yes, I walked out of there. I left the barbecue, I couldn't top it. I didn't want chicken, I didn't want a burger, I didn't want a beer. Very close relationships throughout the years. I still have a very close-knit group of high school friends. We've stayed friends since we graduated. College friends, Ben Goldman, John Cohen are here representing the crew today. I like beer. <laughs> I'll say it. I still like beer. Okay, finally. Advice. Be authentic. More than anything else. When the red light goes on and you're looking into the camera or talking into a microphone, you gotta be you. The essence of you needs to come through. We don't need robots on the air. We need real people connecting with viewers and listeners. If you're not an interesting person, become more interesting. <laughs> I know that sounds like a challenge, but what does that entail? Read a book. Watch some Netflix. Ozark is very good. Watch that. Listen to people. You have to be naturally curious. You have to actually listen to people's answers. You have to be interested in their answers. That's the only way you can tell stories, truly. Take pride in being articulate off the air. I know we get caught up with what we say and what we do when we're on the air. But take that next step as a person. Take some serious pride in how you conduct yourself. And get rid of verbal ticks and crutches, like, you know, um. You can't be great on the air if you're not great off the air. And the line at some point starts to blur. I'm not saying that you're in play-by-play -play mode all day, every day. Don't go to the Italian restaurant. I'd like the spaghetti carbonara. That's not what I'm saying. Please don't. Oh, you can do that. I mean, it would be a nice, interesting back and forth with the waiter. What I'm saying is find the happy medium and work at it. Actually be conscious of it. That's important. I, I really believe that's, that's important. I feel this job is a marriage of preparation and performance. The preparation part, anyone that's worked in it knows that. You've got to be prepared. The performance part may be underrated. You have to perform in the moment. You have to deliver when the time comes. Marry those two. And here's the last part. Put good into the world. Have a positive disposition. If you're constantly complaining, if you're constantly agitated, change. Make a change. Make a conscious decision to change. Let me put it in the simplest way possible. Don't be an asshole. <laughs> Truly. If in a moment you think to yourself, is this an asshole move? Don't. Don't be that person. And the last thing for those, and I know we have a lot of broadcast students, here's the biggest key. When it's time, keep
can you block everything out? Everything that's going on in your life, everything that's going on in the world, can you block it out and can you find the right words and the right tone when it matters most? Remind yourself of that. Play it over in your head. It takes supreme focus and concentration to do this job well. Achieve it. Work at it. Develop it. A few more thank yous. I want to thank Maury Gosfran, my agent, uh, for, for being here today. Sandy Montag, who is a Syracuse legend, alum. Kevin Belby, the mayor of Syracuse. Dean Branham, who Mike mentioned, is class personified and one of the kindest souls that I've ever been around. Olivia Stomsky, who we didn't know one another before this whole process. Now we know each other well. It's funny how that works. A director of Newhouse Sports Media Center, and I know that this department is in incredible hands with you. And uh, thanks again for everything you've done here today. Find your passion. Figure out what inspires you. Figure out what gets you excited in the morning. And then do that. Commit to it. Immerse yourself in it. Syracuse was only home for me for four years. But it'll always be home. This feels like home. And you feel like family. Thank you so much. that we've gone a little long, but it was more than worth it, so thank you all so much. Congratulations to Ian Eagle, this year's recipient of the Marty Glickman Award. We are lucky to have you as a part of our team, but more importantly, as a part of our family. So thank you so much for being what we all look up to and to epitomize the reason why we have this award for your leadership, your kindness, and your guidance to not only our students, but all of us in the industry as well. So thank you. I would like to thank all of you for joining us tonight. We hope that you will uh, join us all in the atrium for reception directly afterwards. And we hope that you all stay involved with the Newhouse Sports Media Center. And thank you all for coming to celebrate Iron Eagle tonight. Mm -hmm.